with your pays here now with stories trending around the world. Hello, G. Good morning, Dr. Good Martin. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. You know I love your red tie, right? <laughs> <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm good, thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Tundu, good morning. Good morning, as always. Thank you, you too, thank as you. always. Thank you. Good morning, Rafai. How are you? OG, 100%. <laughs> thank you. How are you this morning? Very well, thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you. well good morning to you viewers. Well, we'll begin what's trending with the biggest news, right? Uh, in Nigeria, social media was abuzz on Monday with reports suggesting that the acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, had been arrested by the Department of State Services. It, however, emerged that the acting chairman had been invited to appear before the presidential panel to review the activities of the EFCC. And during the process, he was questioned for alleged corruption practices. Let's take some reactions. One user wrote... If it is eventually proven that Magu is guilty of corruption, as alleged, it will be a huge indictment of our entire federal governance apparatus, including the DSS. This is a guy that has been investigated and reinvestigated since his first nomination as EFCC chairman by the president in 2016. If the president gave him a pass back then, despite that damning DSS report and repeated objection by the legislature, then what changed between then and now? And who didn't do his job well at the time? We need to know. Well, in response, one user wrote, the question is, is the head of anti-corrupt agencies above probes? I think an oversight is supposed to dawn on them from time to time, given that they are also vulnerable to diverting looted, looted funds and or blackmail. Well, I know we've discussed this in detail, correct? And I know that, you know, you guys are saying, well, whether or not he was being arrested or detained is not the issue. But my um, objection right now is, like you said, um, Tundu, I know that he was arrested because arrest is very clear that, you know, your powers or your freedom of movement was um, uh, disrupted at a particular time. That's an arrest. Second point is that how is he an anti-corruption czar with all the allegations that have been levied on him for years? So, so this is my you. issue. Yeah. He was first um, nominated mm -hmm. in 2015 yes. and was rejected by the 8th National Assembly twice based on a damning DSS report. Yes. Now, I don't agree with that tweet you'd read, the first one you read, about how the DSS will also be indicted yes. if it turns out that he's proved to be guilty. Because, because they actually they have presented correct. this presented report, the report in 2015. Correct. So for whatever reason, he, does, he hasn't been re-nominated before the 9th National Assembly. He's just been left in his acting capacity. My issue is why, at that point, if the Senate does not want to confirm this gentleman, you could pick somebody else. I think it might be because of the tension that existed at the time between the National Assembly and the presidency. Mm -hmm. So the presidency dug their heels in. But if it does transpire that he's guilty of what he's been accused of, it will look really bad for the presidency, quite frankly. So I have named this person as the anti-corruption czar. But so far, from what we know, the only good thing I can say about it is that the presidency looks good in allowing him to defend himself. Yes, I mean, that's he, there's the that process. Legal Maxim or the author and Potem here, the Correct. other side. He wasn't summarily dismissed based on a memo by his boss, the Attorney General. He's been given six hours, as was reported, and that suggests to me that he got to fully say his side of the story. So we'll see how it all pans out. He could have been sacked, but he wasn't. So. Yes, but what do you suggest that he should do? Do you think that he should recuse himself at this Absolutely. point? Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for raising that. <laughs> because you know what? Yeah. In my mind, mm. it's a given. Right. But apparently it's not a given. Mm. He should actually step down mm. while the investigation Correct. continues. I agree with well, you. Well, I've commented at length on this, uh, on this program this morning. And um, the only thing that remains to add is that, look, he who alleges must prove. The uh, Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice raised the allegations that have led to this interrogation that we're now witnessing. But I'm concerned that uh, uh, the uh, reaction from the public has been hyperbolic. Uh, and that's probably understandable, considering the important position that Mr. Ibrahim Magu occupies. Uh, but. Again, I make the point that until those allegations are proven, he remains an innocent man. 
Um, the pe people can imagine all kinds of end time possibilities, you know, but those allegations will have to be proven first. And if it then happens that, you know, he's indicted, uh, then of course that would be a negative for President Buhari's anti-corruption campaign. But if he comes out innocent out of it, and even this process that is happening, uh, all of that will be positive for the administration. Because what the president has been able to demonstrate is that in his administration, there are no secret cows. And that if an allegation is uh, raised against anybody, including the watchman that he has put in charge of the anti-corruption campaign, he will ask that that should be investigated. So the person looking good in all of this is President uh, Buhari. But I think Nigerians on social media and elsewhere uh, should save their fire and allow the process to be seen through. There are persons who have raised all kinds of, you know, uh, scenarios. There are people who have said, oh, this is a power play within the presidency. There are persons who have said, oh, this has to do with 2023. You know, all those permutations, all those conspiracy theories. You will get more as the uh, situation unfolds. But the good news about it is that Mr. Magu is being given the opportunity to respond to the allegations, to defend himself, and at the end of the day, the process must be fair and just. And we can be consoled by the fact that the uh, chairman of the panel is uh, a retired justice of the Court of Appeal who understands fully uh, whatever principles we, have, we may have articulated on this program this morning. All right, Rufai, I'll throw the same question to you. I mean, he has been the acting chairman since 2015. Uh, do you think that he should have... I mean, maybe that's why he has not been confirmed as, you know, a substantive chairman. Uh, what's your take on that? No, uh, I, I mean, I think there are other issues as to why he has not been confirmed. And I think the Senate will tell us uh, the qualms they have against uh, Ibrahim Magu, why it's not been confirmed. I don't think it's because of this case on ground. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong about it. Uh, secondly, uh, there are many sides to this matter. We need to be very careful. I think Dr. Abati has pointed that out uh, repeatedly. We need to be very careful. Why? Number one is because you cannot nail a man uh, that has not been proven guilty. And what if he comes out of this? Uh, what if he's vindicated <clears throat> uh, by the committee led by uh, uh, Justice Ayah Salami? What if he's vindicated? Uh, secondly, the issue of the power play. I mean, we've seen one too many times. I mean, there, there might be power play. I think that issue was further, uh, you know, uh, put light on by uh, the statement issued by uh, Professor Femi Odekule. Uh, what if there's an issue of power play? We don't know. Let's just wait till this uh, committee brings us a report. And thirdly, let us look inwards, especially for those that are quick uh, to go write things on social media. And you know the shocking thing on social media, sorry to bust your bubble, Audrey, is the high level of ignorance on social media. <laughs> Why bust my bubble? Uh, of course we know uh, that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the high, no, because, you know, we take these comments from Twitter. That's why I say, sorry to bust your bubble. Oh, well, we have to, <laughs> because that's, what's, uh, that's what people are commenting. Yeah, but correct. the high level of ignorance is quite very shocking. And I think everybody should just, you know, lay it down and let's watch how all of this pans out. And, and, and let us really see the facts from all the fiction as regards this. But let's just all be careful and let's look at the bigger picture Nigeria is, 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 is drowning under the weight of corruption. Uh, what legacies do we want to leave behind? Uh, Magu has tried his best in fighting this. Uh, what precedence is he going to set? Uh, there's another angle of the fact that corruption is fighting back. Mm. So let's look at all these angles and let's be careful. Yes, I like and that point. And one point that should be made is mm. the reaction of the People's Democratic Party. Yes. The People's Democratic Party, in a statement, is saying uh, that Mr. Magu should uh, stand down uh, while this investigation is going on. Well, I mean, do we know whether the uh, interaction with the panel has been going on before now? Do we know how long it will take? But the caution is that this is not a thing to be politicized. Instead, the PDP should, in fact, be praising the government for showing a determination uh, to even go to any level to interrogate just about anybody. Anyway, let's take a short break. 
when we return, we'll be back with uh, OG Akpeh, which was trending around the world. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us is OG Akpeh, which was trending around the world. Hello, OG. Thank Over you. to you. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone laughs. Dr. Abati, come on. <laughs> All right, well, let's take another story. Still in Nigeria. The immediate past secretary of the Ondo State Government, Ifedayo Abegunde, who resigned his position on Monday, has alleged that Governor Rotimi Akiridolu didn't win the 2016 governorship election in the state as declared. Abegunde had on Monday morning tendered his resignation following a cold war between him and Governor Akiridolu in a radio interview. Abegunde said some money bags in the All Progressive Congress, including himself, rigged Akeridolu into power in 2016 by manipulating the election result in his favor. According to him, Akeridolu lost the 2016 governorship poll to the then People's Democratic Party candidate, Eitayo Jegwede, who he claimed was the winner of the election. Users on social media have reacted to his claim. Let's take some tweets. One user wrote, the SSG should be arrested for saying and charged to court on the basis of defamation, obstruction of justice, and intent to disrupt the peace of the state. What took him so long to say this? He should not even be given any relevance at all. Another user wrote, this his statement is actually worse than the electoral banditry that he admits to and have participated in. People like this need to be retired from partisan politics and persecuted because they are traitors and betrayers. Finally, a user wrote, this is Nigeria. They'll set up a panel now with taxpayers' money to investigate the statement, and the investigation will last for like 10 to 15 years thereabout. Really a damning revolution by... Um, the SSG or the past SSG. I don't know what he was thinking. What, what, what does he think that he could come out on the radio and say that he rigged an election and think it's okay? I mean, I, I don't understand this. It's a shocking thing to say. I find it extremely offensive. Yes. And like the first tweet that you read established, it's a crime. The Electoral Act yes. 2010, as amended, has a list of electoral offenses, and some of them have a fine, which those money bags that he mentioned should pay, and some of them carry jail terms of up to 10 years with no option of a fine. He should be investigated and prosecuted. How dare he? I mean, we know that our democracy leaves a lot to be desired, but in the middle of a spat, because you want to spite a sitting governor, you open your mouth and implicate yourself. This is a criminal offense he has just admitted to. Absolutely. And it should not be allowed to just lie like that. It's yep. completely wrong what he said. Yep. Well, the uh, former uh, uh, secretary to the government of Ondo State, the Federal Abegunde, made this admission on radio, Crest yes. uh, FM, uh, 87.7, it is called, and an express admission of guilt, right, uh, is precisely what he has done. Yes. <laughs> what he has done is to engage in an act of confession. Uh, what he has done is to admit that he was an accessory before and after the fact to uh, an electoral offense, namely rigging. He even defined it himself. I don't know whether there is a statute of uh, limitation with regard to electoral offenses. This offense was committed in no. 2016. There is none? No. And okay. so the, there is a job the here for INEC and the uh, police to do. I think. This gentleman by now should have been arrested. Uh, his statement should have been taken, and he needs to be prosecuted because he has used his own mouth uh, Self to, to convict himself yes. uh, within the public domain. Conviction in the public domain may not have any effect. He has to go through the process of the law. That's one leg of it. The second leg of it is that he also admitted to the uh, evil of Godfatherism in uh, Nigerian politics, because he said we were the ones behind him, along with some godfathers. Otherwise, he would not have been able to win the election. So in other words, he publicly said that the will of the people of Edo State, uh, their, 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 their votes did not count in the 2016 gubernatorial election in, Undo, in uh, Undo, Undo State. Undo State. And he and some others manipulated the process, persons he identified as a uh, 
godfathers. And I think that going forward, that is an evil that needs to be addressed uh, if, we, if we are serious about maintaining the integrity of the electoral process and the credibility of elections in Nigeria. The th third point that needs to be made is that, well, this looks on the surface of it like sour grapes. Because in some other accounts, it's been quoted as saying that uh, Governor Akere Dolu claims that he gives him 5 million naira every month. And that with all that he did to get him into office, is it 5 million naira that he's entitled to? Money that is not even enough for him to take care of his constituents. Now, he said he had even reported the governor uh, to the governor of Ikiti State, uh, Dr. Kaudi uh, Fayemi, yes. but that uh, the governor did not adjust. So he also has made it clear that, look, corruption is a living thing uh, in the politics that they play in Ondo State. Although he makes it clear that the uh, problem with the governor is that he chops alone. Yes, and then uh, he, uh, he shares it with his family. Yes, and yes. he chops alone that the only people who benefit from his administration are members of his family, his wife, and outsiders who come from Imo State. <laughs> I think the governor's wife is I from Imo State. Yeah, so that was that uh, Betty and Yamu Akere Dolu. Yeah. So again, there's also an element of tribalism yes. in his uh, protest. So what has been exposed, of course, clearly, by way of conclusion, is that there is trouble in the government house in uh, Undo State. It's not only the secretary to the uh, state government that has resigned, uh, we're told that up to about nine commissioners may also resign. There are reports also that the House of Assembly that is reconvening uh, may also come up with uh, some additional drama in a few days. But the footnote to all of that is that in the face of all these attacks on the governor, uh, the COVID-19 that was reported, that uh, he reported that he was positive for COVID-19 a few days ago, Within 72 hours, it's he has negative. tested negative. No, it's six days, Dr. Uh, Martin. Is days. it up to six days? <laughs> yes. And well, but people have raised the concern that <laughs> it's I mean, been up to six days. It's not even up to 14 know, days. Maybe they caught his at the tail end. <laughs> no, exactly, <laughs> okay. because yeah, he had possible. malaria. That's why I was yeah. saying that this is not, so, this not so huge. Because first, he was asymptomatic. I just thought it was strategic. No, it was not. He suddenly recovered. No, it was six days. Faster than other people, so that I can come and face Abegunde and Abola and the others who are saying that he will not return as God. <laughs> That's a very valid point. But you know, the five million that he's claiming also, he says he never touched that five million. I'd love your uh, comment on that, Rufai. I, 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 I mean, I, I wanted to further that uh, conversation. But why was it that when they started pointing out to the governor that why can't you hand one over to Abola? That was when he recovered. His COVID-19 vanished, disappeared. <laughs> Because the, the recovery was, was very fast. And it was when they started saying, hand over to our book. No, they hand probably cut his book. at the tail end. Yeah, yeah okay. I think it was at the tail end. Rufai, Rufai, I have a question for you. We're talking earlier, the fact that some people died for this democracy. Uh -huh. Was it worth it when you hear things like this? Ah, it wasn't worth it. But Tundu, you and I were sitting there when somebody came on air to say, that Nigeria has not got to the level where the electorate decide who wins the election now. <laughs> Words on marble, you and honestly. I, you and I were sitting there. I cannot and forget like, that. Wow. Oh, my God. I'm more surprised. Mm -hmm. To a large extent, sour grapes, like Dr. Abati said. It just shows the kind of politics we play. We don't play, poli we don't play the politics with the interests of the people. What we do is selection. They put you there. Then they, 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 they funnel cash off you. Then it's a cycle. I'm not, I'm not, see, all of this doesn't surprise me. But what surprises me the most is the lack of respect for the people of the state and the impunity at which they do it. Correct. Politicians must think they are Teflons in this country that nobody can touch them. Yeah. So it's the disrespect, it's the bracing disrespect, it's the in your face disrespect at which they do it. The people don't matter. They don't care about the people. You can go to hell or high heavens. They don't care. That's what shocks me the most. That's what makes me sad. I think it was Edward Morrow that said, in a country where the government is a wolf, the people will become the sheep. It's sad, but Nigerians are fast becoming the sheep because of these political wolves everywhere. And you know what? It sets a bad precedence. 
Europeans have a saying, oh, bo, oh, bo, well, I dare deal. what it means is, it's coming, it's coming, we'll see the repercussions someday. I just pray it doesn't catch up with all of us because this is a bad precedent. But we are not surprised. We've heard these tales before over and over again. I rest my case. And that's why he was emboldened to make that awful statement in public. He didn't know what he was doing. I mean, I mean, I think this is a... No, he knows what he was doing. No, oh, apparently gee. not. How oh, could gee. he think? Is oh, he gee. going to... He's, he's, he's convinced oh, that there'll be no repercussions oh, he's because convinced. there hasn't oh, been for oh, other people. He knows what he was doing. Let me tell you what he was doing. Tell me. He was discrediting the governor to be able to gain votes. Let me shock How you. How do you discredit wait, and wait, then wait, implicate wait, yourself? Wait, wait. Let, me, let me shock you. Let me yes, shock I'm you. listening. There are a group of people that will say, oh, yes, he has come out to convert. Let's forgive him, but let's ensure that the governor pays in the next election. Another thing I'll, I'll shock you about is the mentality of an average Nigerian electorate. If you open the brain of an average Nigerian electorate, you'll be shocked what you see there. So he knows what he was doing. He knows he's not going to be convicted. I dare INEC to take that case up. Well, well I hope that they will do. happen to this guy. I dare I mean, INEC. He knows why he was able to say that. Yeah, I dare yeah, INEC. It's so sad. Oh, Jimmy, are you? We are here. We'll, we'll be watching. Let's okay. see what INEC will do. Well, but even if INEC does not do anything, it's out there in uh, the public domain. Exactly. And people have noted this, that this Correct. is how they play politics yeah. in Ondo State. And will uh, the PDP candidate who was said to have won by this gentleman, will he this, decide to take this up? Well, I mean, that, that is already uh, time bad now. So he can't take it up. Yeah, in you any see? case, the gentleman <laughs> who, who was rigged into office, as alleged, has spent uh, the whole time. No, but no, no, He's no, now no, looking no. for he a can't, second no, time. Absolutely no, that's not what I meant. I meant he could in, sort of try and compel INEC to prosecute. No, that, that ship has oh, sailed. Oh, to compel yes, INEC to, to prosecute. prosecute. That's a good point. Who knows? Yeah, let's, let's see, see if he does. Let's see if he'll do that, mm. yes. Should we take another story before yes, we take a break? Please. Or Okay, perfect. Two minutes. Okay, great. We'll take this uh, read and then we'll come back for a discussion. Let's take another story. Nigerians on social media have reacted to the federal government's announcement that the third mainland bridge in Lagos is set to shut down for six months. On Monday, the federal controller of works in Lagos State, Olukayode Popola, said that consultation for another phase of repair works on the third mainland bridge in Lagos are set to begin and the 11.8 Kilometer bridge will be shut down starting Friday, July 24th, adding that the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing will work with relevant agencies to perfect plans to manage the anticipated traffic issues during the period. Let's take some quick reactions before we go on a break. One user wrote, before embarking on this repairs of the third mainland bridge, Babatunde Raji Fashola and the entire Federal Ministry of Works and Housing should ensure that the works being done on the Co Bridge are completed well before July 24th. Anything short of that would mean chaos for commuters in Lagos. Another user wrote, Timing of this announcement is ill-advised, considering the intensity of the rains over the past month and the poor state of the alternate roads. This will lead to wide-scale traffic jams in Africa's most populous metropolis and adversely affect our already fragile economy. Finally, a user wrote, crippling of the Lagos economy by COVID-19 is child's play compared to the closure of Third Mainland Bridge. The businesses in the private sector will eventually collapse in Lagos for the next one year. Ireland is the business hub of Lagosians. All right. I guess we uh, go on a quick break before we come back for a discussion. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Still with us is Oji Opek with what's trending around the world. Hello, G. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Bati. Well, before we went on a break, we were talking about the closure that's about to happen on the Third Mainland Bridge. And everyone is concerned, obviously, because there's no alternate route at this point. Now, the point that one of our, my uh, tweets, um, my Twitter user uh, wrote, was the fact that there is still the closure of the Eco Bridge, which is another route that comes into Lagos. Now, what's going to happen at that point? So this wasn't well thought out then. Yeah. If that's actually true, it was not well thought out. There has to be at least a few alternatives. Third mainland bridge, you cannot begin to imagine the biblical levels of traffic that Lagos will see if there's no alternative. Six months is a very long time. I it mean, I, I cannot begin to imagine what's it going is, to happen. We is. have to have alternate routes. 
We have to. Well, <clears throat> I mean, when I read the story, I was scared. I yeah, was because afraid. that's your... Because what it means is that in the course of about six months, many people living on the mainland will be cut off from the island part of Lagos. Now, that bridge, the first phase of it was uh, completed in 1980 uh, by the Shagari administration. The second phase of it, which is the main bridge, was completed by the Babangida government in uh, 1990. So that bridge you see there has been there from about 1980 to 1990. And it's one of the three bridges that link the mainland part of Lagos with the island. The other two bridges are Eko and Qatar Bridge. Before that third mainland bridge, the pattern in Lagos was that, look, some vehicles were not allowed to go to certain parts of the city because of the congestion. Mm. Um, they used to do even and odd numbers I uh, in those, those days. days. <laughs> so you will need to go and get vehicles that will have odd number or even number for you on specific days yes. for you to be allowed to come to the island. So th that bridge uh, added to Eco Bridge and Kata Bridge is transportation. And according to uh, the Federal Ministry of Works, within a space of 12 hours, over 200,000 vehicles go back and forth on that bridge alone. So imagine the uh, amount of traffic. Even when that bridge is not shut down, it's a nightmare traveling from the uh, uh, mainland to the island part of Lagos, particularly whenever it rains. Now, to shut that down for uh, six months, uh, many people who live on the mainland may just have to uh, relocate to the uh, island. Maybe they will look for boy scotters <laughs> where they will stay, and then for that cause the congestion Thomas, on the we're island. Gonna have to do but that. All of this, of course, is due to uh, the failure of leadership, in yeah. my view. Since 1990, we've been hearing stories about uh, problems with that bridge, cracks, you know, expansion of joints, mm. and some occasion, on some occasions it was shut down for maybe a space of two, three days. Yes. And uh, Lagosians will endure it, but now Lagosians have been told six months. We've also been told that there have been plans to build a fourth mainland bridge to reduce the pressure on that bridge. It has not happened. 1990 will be how many years now? About 30 years ago. In a space of 30 years, we have not had anybody who deemed it necessary to do a fourth Milan bridge for the comfort of the people of Lagos. I think it's a failure of leadership in that regard. The second point is about urban planning crisis. We don't pay enough attention to urban planning. It's like people just go into a big positions of authority and they just don't pay attention to details. You will expect that the major crisis that we have in Lagos, almost every major business is on the island. Yes. Every business has its headquarters on the oh, island. Of course. It's some kind of a, a snob appeal for you to say, I live in Ikui, I have my office in Victoria Island. Now, in some other countries where urban planning is taken seriously, some of those headquarters of businesses will have been relocated to other parts, perhaps to the suburbs, to the suburbia, you know, but that has not happened. Everybody's ambition on the mainland is also to come to the island. Correct. One of these days, the same island that is uh, congested, that is uh, facing a lot of environmental difficulties, you know, will be so congested that we'll be dealing with some other crisis. I was amused the other day when somebody who lives on the island was expressing concern about area boys on the island because it's the area boys too are moving to the island and security has become a big issue. So there's a need for a rethinking, a long-term rethinking. Yes. If they shut down that, uh, that uh, bridge for six months, well, maybe some of us will be uh, getting to the studio after the program. No, you have ended. to relocate, Dr. <laughs> Abadji. We've impossible. been telling you to relocate. <laughs> you have to come and live on maybe the island. Maybe you give me a room in your apartment. Uh, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> well, Rufai, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, three points. Number one, failure of leadership. Uh, the first bridge, uh, Kata Bridge, was built, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, way before 1920 or 1930. I think it was even built even earlier than that. Uh, then you had Third Milan Bridge that was completed in 1990. So, see, uh, let's say Kata Bridge was built 19, before 1920 or before 1910. There was an 80 year gap before they could build uh, the third mainland bridge in 1990. So look at that disparity. Another 30 years down the line, we've not been able to increase that. And look at the progression of the population in Lagos. 
the population has increased tremendously. I think Lagos was about 9, 10 million people as at 94, 95, or less than that. But now we are counting over 22 million people. And to a large extent, it shows the failure of leadership and how we should question the past if we want to look at the future. How I wish the Metro Line Latif Jack on the Weather to do in the 80s came on board. This will have ameliorated the challenge. Lagos is the only mega city in the world I know that doesn't have a metro. 22 million population, no proper mass transit mechanism, no metro. These are the things we should also be looking at. They said, oh, they are doing the blue line and the red line. It has not fully come into operation. Because really, if you have metro, you'll be able to take the burden off the third mainland bridge. I mean, if you have a very good train system that works, a carriage can carry hundreds of people and gives them a comfortable feel that they don't even need to drive their cars to work. So that's something I believe, even as we are building Fort Mainland Bridge, we should also look at very critically. Then I feel we've not been able to harness our waterways effectively. It's sad mm -hmm. for me I was going that to Lagos that is just talking about its waterways and talking about using this waterway for transport. As we speak today, I don't think we have a direct ferry or a roll-on roll of catamaran that can take you from the start of the Third Milan Bridge to the end of the Third Milan Bridge into the island. These are investments we should look at very strongly because we have everything on ground to be able to do this, but as we always say on this show, maybe there was no uh, political will. Also, Dr. Bati, you cited um, the island and a lot of headquarters. That's another big factor. The island is a ticking time bomb. Environmental hazards, water pushing back, a lot of sound feeling. These things over the years will have its effect. I think it was uh, uh, the, the great essay, and I forgot his name now, uh, uh, Femi Okunu, that was telling me while I was having a session with him that most of the lands are reclaimed. He even told me that even Lagos Island is reclaimed land. And these are things we should look at. So why don't we use this to develop other parts of Lagos? Why don't we bring headquarters to places like Badagri? Why don't you bring headquarters based like Ikorodu Very to be able to reply. decentralize all these areas? Because government has to be intentional with development of other parts rather than looking at it. So it's a so holistic right? summation of everything that we should look at as regards, as regards Lagos. All right. Very good point. I know that last year they launched Uber Boat. Hopefully that would be, um, you know, something that they might look into at well, this point. Well, Uber Boat is yeah. of no use to people living in Abule Egba or Kokomaiko. Yes, Alak I know, Uko, but it could help. Alagbole, I would also, all Try those people also living in Should we take our final I think, the, I think the metro Let's they are building passes through the areas. <laughs> We're running all out right. of time. Let's take our final story. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan, have said the Commonwealth must acknowledge the past by highlighting the wrongs of the historic involvement in the countries that now make up the Commonwealth, while speaking on justice and equal rights with young leaders from the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, of which Harry and Meghan are president and vice president, respectively. Harry said people must acknowledge the past, even when doing so is uncomfortable. Let's take a quick listen. There's no way that we can move forward unless we acknowledge the past. And I think so many people have, have done such an amazing, incredible job of acknowledging the past and trying to right those wrongs. But I think we all acknowledge on here mm -hmm. that there is so much more still to do. It's not going to be easy, and in some cases it's not going to be comfortable. But it needs to be done because guess what? Everybody benefits. So I think there's a hell of a lot that we together need to acknowledge, but I only see, I only see hope and optimism. Well, unfortunately, yes. Ojin, not enough time to talk about this, but certainly we must acknowledge the past. But the Absolutely. past is never idyllic. We must always remember that. Thank very you very good. much. Thank you, guys.